Okay, let's take a look at this model um, that I made from something I found at my local hardware store. This is for um, a fountain. You can plug in water, and this is a ceramic uh, sculpture, and the water comes out the front. Uh, what I did was make two videos, and I flipped the object over, and I got the underside of it. So those two videos took me less than a minute each. And when I imported those videos, the software just transformed them into photo sets. So here's what a photo set looks like. You can see I just walked all the way around the object. Then I got the underside. So after running this algorithm, uh, the software has automatically combined those two sets. It has deleted the background and identified the object. So I can actually take a look at every one of these photos. You can see that that lines up with the reconstructed point cloud. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to erase the background. I can adjust this cropping box, but it looks like it did it automatically really well. So are, are you saying that you just took two videos and then the software just extracts frames from it as photos and then reconstructs uh, the object into 3D, right? Exactly. So two okay. videos become two sets of frames and the software reconstructs a complete model based on all of those images. Okay. How long did that take you just to take the videos? It took me less than a minute for each video. Oh. Imagine just setting an That's object down yeah. and walking around it a few times. That's all it takes. Then running the second algorithm gives me the actual mesh. So it triangulates that point cloud and it, we get something like this. I was going to say, it's really impressive that you could take uh, two videos that you took in under a minute and you could generate such amazing results as a 3D model. Uh, yes, that's why we're all really excited about it. Um, not just that we can now use um, photogrammetry within Arctic Studio, but that it's an AI algorithm that it automatically studies those images and can combine multiple sets of images to get a complete scan of an object. So to get the underside of something, you just flip it over, make another video, then the software combines it for you. It looks at the dimensions and it crops everything else out that's not connected to the object. As you can see, there's no erasing, there's no editing, it's just providing it with the image data, and then the AI algorithm figures out the rest. That was good. I was going to ask you, so you took the videos in under a minute, how long does it take to process um, the images into a, like a complete 3D model, as you're showing right now? Yes, yeah, so right now, this is a new algorithm, and it takes a little bit of time in processing depending on the kind of depending on the kind of computer that you have um it could take more or less time for me it took me just two minutes to record those two videos then another two minutes to import them the import process involves just dragging those videos into the software and it asks how many frames per second you would like to extract and so it transforms a video into a photo set that's just two minutes then those two algorithms, one creates our point cloud and another one creates our 3D mesh. The first one took me 14 minutes for this object, and the second one to actually render out the 3D mesh took me 19 minutes. And then also to add the color information back in, it took just one more minute to map the images back onto the mesh. So 40 minutes, under 40 minutes, I was able to scan and reconstruct this 3D model. Now, this will become faster as our tech is improving their algorithms, also depending on the kind of computer you have. I have a laptop. And so we're excited to see where this goes into the future.
So this is a, a sculpture that I scanned with my cell phone and I just walked around it once. If we look at the photo sets, you could see that it's just about life size. So this was reconstructed from just one video. Uh, it's a life-size bust. I have 182 images that were used in the creation of this model. You can see it's got some really nice detail. It's nice to see that engraving, like the quality of the detail. Yeah, it really is quite impressive with just a cell phone. Here is a scene that you could see has been captured by a drone. You can even see the path of my images as I flew the drone around the building. So I flew up and I flew all the way around and I tried to get up over to the steeple to capture some details on the steeple that every one of these images is mapped onto this model I've generated, which is kind of a cool visual here. Do you remember how long you took the footage for? So this was just a few minutes of flying. Oh, okay. That's really impressive. Yeah, so this is quite impressive because something like the Ray, the LiDAR scanner, can't scan so far off the ground. Um, there are certain areas that will be hidden because the scanner's on the ground, but if we need to get up above an object and we can fly a drone over it, we can complete some of our uh, Ray scan data using drones because we can combine that scan data and we can get the accurate scale from the Ray data and then add in the roof from the photogrammetry model. Let's take a look at another one. So you can see here, this is an even larger area. I flew around this site. I was able to capture a lot of the, the trees, the detail, and I was mostly looking to capture the building. So this is what it looks like. It's really cool. You could do an entire, it looks like, did you do an entire block? Yeah, I flew around an entire block, actually. Wow. I'm just impressed at how much data you can generate just with a short video. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'll be continuing to test this. Um, as you can see, this is mm -hmm. the largest block I've scanned. It's an entire apartment building with a a chimney, oh, wow. a water tower here. The water tower was m mainly my focus. But all of those images, as you can see the path of me flying around, have been registered into this scene. And I can render out really any part of it that I want. Let's take a look at the water tower. It's really quite incredible color reconstruction. As you can see, a lot of this rust is visible, the paint that's peeling. It's not perfect. Some of the railing isn't here. And that's because Arctic is still working on the scene reconstruction algorithm. And we'll see it'll improve in the future. It almost feels like what you see in a video game. Yeah, so I do think that for CGI applications, this will be a great tool um, to be able to quickly capture real world objects 
using equipment that people already have, but using the power of Artex photogrammetry software. I want to say for everyone that's stuck around in the, in the conversation for this long, I want to show you some of the realistic comparisons between professional 3D scanners and the photogrammetry. Um, it can look really good right now. I'm seeing that it's really, really nice at reconstructing small and medium objects. Uh, I think it'll improve for the larger objects, larger scenes. And it's important to, I think, really see its limitations depending on what your needs are. So let's let's see what the Leo and uh, iPhone data compares. Okay, so I want to flip back and forth between a scan of the motorcycle, which is a larger object. You can see it's not the best reconstruction. I think that um, what matters here is a nice background and the clarity of image. So depending on the time of day that you're scanning, um, you may get uh, clearer, sharper images. So this wasn't the best scan for photogrammetry. Um, but just looking at the Leo data, it's incredible how much detail the Leo can pick up. So, right, mm -hmm. obviously, we're getting details and we know scientifically kind of measurable um, data here. If we need the positions of bolts, for reverse engineering or um, to understand where these pipes, where the frame is, we can trust that in Leo scan data, whereas with photogrammetry, it may be useful for uh, mocking something up or maybe for CGI work, um, but really not for any other kind of applications that require more precision. Okay. So you're saying for AI for ground tree, sometimes the model might look good, but it's not accurate in terms of measurements, right? Yes, I would say that we can't really trust the photogrammetry data yet. Um, okay. So this fire hydrant looks really quite good because it's more of a medium sized object. And this was done with an iPhone. But when it, we look at the data scanned with the Leo, it's really incredible how much more detail we're picking up. This was scanned at different times, so the chain moves a little bit between scans, but it's really quite impressive how the Leo reconstructs all of those little details. Did it take you a long time to do the Leo scan? No, it actually took me just a few minutes more. Oh, okay. Well, that's really good. And then in terms of process processing speed, is it comparable to AI for round three or is it faster or slower? Yeah, so for processing the Leo data, it is comparable right now because the photogrammetry algorithms are running for so long they're using your nvidia graphics card um, for all of the benefits that it brings to ai it's taken about the same time uh, i think in the future it'll take less time to run a photogrammetry reconstruction of a 3d model than with the leo data um one more thing i want to point out is the color now the leo has the better reconstruction, right? So there's more detail. We can get down to 100 microns in resolution with the Leo. The color capture that comes from the Leo is photographed from the sensor with a ring flash. And so it's got exposure. It's controlling its exposure um, in a way to get pick up the best detail, but it's not creating the most artistic or realistic uh, color map. So if we look at the color information from coming from the Leo, you can see these flashes of that ring flash. It allows us to read the text, look at the rest, but when it comes to photogrammetry, there is no flash. It's just capturing the object with your camera, with your cell phone, 
as it is at whatever time of day you captured it. So you can control the light more and for CGI and other applications, um, photogrammetry has that benefit of um, almost a better texture or just another option for you gives you more control over the texture. Now, of course, with the Leo, we can replace that color data with photogrammetry. We can actually combine the photo sets um, and use the images taken from photogrammetry with the Leo scan data so we can improve that texture. But if you don't have a Leo, um, you could kind of compare the texture here. Anyone can try the software with a 30 day trial and with any cell phone, any video camera. Um, what I recommend is taking your phone, starting a video at the top of an object, walking around it, and then capturing the object at three different heights. So something from above, somewhere in the middle, and then from below. That video, because it's a video, will give you better coverage than just taking individual photos because there are many frames per second in that video file, and you can choose how many of those images to import um, with our tech software. It makes us seem like from from hearing what you're saying is that uh, AI for Roundtree is very intuitive to use and it's really easy to generate 3D models just using your cell phone. And it makes 3D scanning much more accessible to everybody, right? Because it's like you're using your own device. Yeah, I think so. And because it just looks so much better than any of the iPhone LiDAR apps I've seen, um, mm -hmm. I think it's worth trying it out. Um, it does require you to have a computer and to run Artec Studio software, um, but the quality difference that's coming with the AI photogrammetry algorithm um, versus the others, I think it's worth a try. It's really quite impressive. Okay. Sounds good. I know you could download the free trial on Artec's website. Yeah, so you can download the trial on Artec's website. The limitations are that you can't save or export any of the models. It's a full feature trial, so all the algorithms, everything will work. It's just not going to let you export that out of the software. Okay. Sounds good, Art. Well, thanks for sharing uh, everything uh, you know about AI for Roundtree with us today. And I know you're going to uh, put some of the models that you showed us in this video on our Sketchfab page, right? Yeah, so we'll be sharing more and more of the 3D models that we create using Artex AI photogrammetry algorithm on Sketchfab. So I just want to say thank you for joining us today, Pauline, uh, to the viewers as well. Uh, if you're interested in any of our text 3D scanners or software, you can find out more on our website. We do demos. We consult for your specific applications. Uh, reach out to us. And hopefully this has been very helpful for you.